Hello all. Hope you all perform the exams well. And uh, in the previous video, I have given a short analysis about how this 2024 prelims was. As I have said before, same on the expected lines. I have taken 16 questions, which are more constitution and polity questions. But another one or two we can add to it. But I have taken 16 that are, that are more in this bracket of polity and constitution. So we will be discussing about it and uh, we will look into the answers about it. In this, you can understand the way in which questions have been taken up also. See, with reference to the speaker, this question of Lok Sabha, consider the following statements. While any resolution, this if first statement was given, that itself is a separate question, but they have added a thing to it. See, while any resolution for removal of the speaker of Lok Sabha is under consideration, that we have to take it into account. That makes it more, little more, uh, what to say, I can call it an easy question with a tricky nature. Listen to me. Actually, this is nothing but what they have asked is Article 96. Article 96. See, in this first statement, he shall not preside. Yes, the speaker, when his removal is there, under question, they cannot, they shall not preside over. Agreed. So, one is a uh, uh, correct one. So, he or she shall not have the right to speak. Article 96 very clearly say, though they cannot preside, they have the right to speak. So this is wrong. So two has to be wrong. Two has to be wrong itself. Automatically, we arrive at the answer A in the first instance. Anyway, we can see he, she, she shall not be entitled to vote. They are entitled to vote when removal procedure is there. Normally speaking, they cannot. So Article 96 itself clearly says about that. So this is again wrong. A is the answer here. So A is the answer for this question. Next comes 54. So with reference to Indian Parliament, consider the following statements. With reference to Indian Parliament, consider the following statements. Listen. The bill pending in Lok Sabha lapses on its resolution. This is something very commonly anywhere you can find. Constitution very is very clear about this. So, a bill pending in Lok Sabha lapses. So, on its resolution. It's a correct statement. Okay. Then, so, uh, here, a bill passed by Lok Sabha and pending in Rajya Sabha lapses on the dissolution. Bill passed by Lok Sabha but pending in Rajya Sabha. Again, lapses. Correct. A bill in regard to which the President of India notified his intention to summon a joint sitting lapses. Article 108. So here if you see, joint sitting is called by the President. In between, before the joint sitting date comes if the House dissolves, then uh, the bill doesn't lapse. The new House, uh, that is, it still continues. The, even the dissolved members can take part in it. So, this is wrong. B is the answer to it. Again, pretty straight. Again, pretty straight. In our classes, I used to say, this is one area how many times we read, we tend to confuse. So, what we have to do is that we have to last minute do last minute revision on these items, I used to say. So, that again, this question. Next comes 55. This, again, in this uh, order, it is that uh, in this uh, series. So, with reference to the Parliament of India, consider the following statements about prorogation. So, prorogation of a house by the President of India does not require the advice of Council of Ministers. See, with the advice of Council of Ministers, uh, headed by PM alone, he can summon and prorogue. Summoning he can do under one circumstances that if six months gap is done. So, obviously, that statement he is wrong. Okay, the first statement is wrong. One shall not be there. Okay. Prorogation of a house is generally done after the house is adjourned, sine die, but there is no bar to the President of India prorogating the uh, house which is in session. Yes, normally before uh, this prorogation, uh, they adjourn, adjournment sine die and then they prorogue. But occasionally to do that without adjourning the house sine die is not wrong. That is a correct statement and simply straight. 
dissolution of the Lok Sabha in, is done by the President of India who save in exceptional circumstances, that is otherwise in exceptional circumstances, does on the advice of. So what it says is that, see, the, the, the language is little confusing. In fact, it is a very simple one. The resolution of Lok Sabha is done by President, normally on advice of Council of Ministers. Sometimes, occasionally, it can be, rarely, exceptional cases, it can be without them also. Agreed upon. That situation may arise at any point of time. So that is an agreed upon one. So B is the, this, if you see here, 2 and 3, C is the answer to it. C is the answer to it. Okay, next one. So consider, this is 61st question in this order. Consider the following statements regarding Nari Shakti Vandan Abhinayam. So the uh, we may, uh, 106 Amendment Act. So provisions will come into effect from, no, actually they haven't said that it will come into effect from this Lok Sabha. What they have clearly stated is that after the next census is done and uh, then the delimitation done, Based on it, it will come. After next delimitation, it will. So this is the wrong statement. One. So which of the following as correct means the one cannot be there. Even now you see we have arrived at the answer. So this will be in force for 15 years after becoming an act. Obvious. Then there are provisions for the reservation of seats for SC women within the quota. Two and three straight. See already with one itself I told other things. So this is, this is a trend like last before year kind of a trend. What we are having. Most questions they ask like this somewhere. They have even asked last year's trend also. So writ of prohibition. Such a straight one. Writ of prohibition is an order issued by the Supreme Court or High Courts to government officer. No. Parliament is ready. No. Lower court prohibiting continuation of a proceeding in a case straight to straight. See if the answer to it. Okay. Then 64. Consider the following statements. It is the governor of the state. Such a wonderful question, this one. It is the governor of a state who recognizes and declares any community of that state as scheduled tribe. It is not governor. We have again and again seen class also 342 article, which clearly says even in a state, SC 341, ST, who is an ST declared by president. It is President. So that statement is wrong. One is wrong. So here, a community declared as a scheduled tribe in a state need not be so in another state. Yes, that statement is correct. Even sometimes back, a circular was released by the government where the social justice department, they even clearly stated within a state of migration, if one uh, city to another city or a village to city, somewhere they go, that is not a problem. They still enjoy whatever that is. Uh, determined of that state. But state to state migration, they will be ST only concerning that state where it is that their tribe is called ST. So that is that. So B is the answer here. So B is correct. B is the answer here with regard to 64. Now, this one, 76, if you see here, as per wonderful question, but such an easy question, take it from me. This is what? I always insist people to study polity and constitution from Bar Act. Insist that. This is straight to straight taken. Say, take Article 316. Very first subclass you would be seeing it. So, as per Article 368 of the Constitution of India, the Parliament may amend any provision of the Constitution by way of addition, variation or repeal. They would say that. All the three. Straight answer. But 368 you have to take Bar Act. There as it is. Oops, also it is there. Bar Act as it is there. Addition, variation or repeal. It is there. So it's a straight answer. So then the 78th one here. Which of the following uh, are correct in respect of money bill? Okay. See, this is again one uh, tricky one. Listen to me. Article 109 mentions Special procedure in respect of money bill. See, money bill, does, this is why again Bar Act helps. Students, money bill 110. 110 money, that's all, nothing more than that. Because they don't see any other articles also nearby what it is. When we have a Bar Act, when we see, we will get to know it. 109 speaks about special procedures in respect of money bill. It's a correct statement again. It's a correct statement. 
Okay, so one is there, one has to be there, then the money bill shall not be introduced in the Council of States. Obviously, it is introduced only in Lok Sabha, that is there. Okay, then the Rajya Sabha can either approve the bill or suggest changes, but cannot reject it. Obviously, even if it rejected, that doesn't matter. Then amendments to uh, money bills suggested by the Rajya Sabha have to be accepted by the Lok Sabha. Nothing like that. Even few years back, such a similar statement in a question was also asked. So one, two, three is the answer. C is the answer here. Again, pretty straight. Okay, now, Northeast Council. See here, with regard to Northeast Council, so established by Northeast C and subsequent to the amendment of 2002, can see this itself in order to make the question lengthy and make us think more, I think they have put that um, after the amendment of 2002. Simply they could have put it as it is. Okay, fine. Following members, governor, yes, governor of the constituent state, that concerned state, then chief minister of the constituent states, then three members to be nominated by president of India, home minister, all it comprises of everyone here. One, two, three, four. D is the answer here. And again, pretty straight one. How many delimitation commissions have been election happen? Related question comes. Expected like. Okay. After 1951 census, we had one. After 61 census, we had one. After 71 census, we had one. Then after 2001 census, we had one in 2003. And obviously, it is four. So, okay. Article 82 deals with delimitation commission anyway. So, this, how many times have we set that up? The parliament has set up a delimitation commission four times. A pretty straight one. So, then... The Constitution 71st Amendment Act 1992 amends the 8th Schedule. Yes. See, three languages were included in it. Konkani, Manipuri, Nepali. Maithali, it came another 10 years later. So, here it is the uh, 1, 2, 3 is the answer here. So, with regard to this, A is the answer. Pretty straight one, I suppose. This uh, is a very, very easy question and a pretty straight one. More like a GK question, that one. Which of the following statements are correct about the Constitution of India? See, this is a wonderful question, which students usually take it for granted, overlooking. They don't see which part to come under what. Few years back, they asked a question with relate to uh, untouchability comes under which of the following parts uh, within the fundamental rights. So, right to uh, uh, this equality. But they have put a question of that nature. So that's a simple one only. Same way, this one now parts they are asking. So here, power of municipalities are given in part 9A of the constitution. 74th Amendment Act included part 9A. No doubt, correct. Then emergency provision, part 18, correct. Provisions relating to the amendment of the constitution 368 comes under 20, correct. 1, 2, 3, answer. So straight one, no problem. So, which of the following statements is correct as per the Constitution of India? It is really little tougher question only, straight question. But we should have gone deeper. See, in class, I always used to say to you all, just have a glance. See, all the 100 items, 66 items, 47 items to know everything. Little bit of confusion may take place. But keep seeing it periodically that you may remember something. So such a, see, the interstate trade and matter alone they have taken. With that, they have mixed up a lot. See, interstate trade and commerce is a state subject. Actually, interstate trade and commerce is there in both. In fact, both three, all the three lists. But interstate trade and commerce straight away is meant it is in union list only. So with regard to state subject, it is there in state list. But uh, is a state subject they are giving. No, it is a union subject. Wrong. In interstate migration is a state subject. No union subject. Interstate quarantine. Yes. Union subject. Okay. It is union subject. Pure. Corporation tax state. No, it is a union central subject. No problem at all. This is, this is easy. We can identify. See is the answer here. So this question, straight question. But we should have the habit of looking into the list. Under which of the following articles of the Constitution of India has Supreme Court of India placed right to privacy? Right from 2020, this is the third time they are asking this question relating to it. Prelims itself, third time. Right from 2020, within four years, three times, I think they have asked. 
or 19 from 5 years, 3 times asked. Okay, so 21, straight one, no second thought about it. Now, what are the duties of Chief of Defense Staff as head of the Department of Military Affairs? Such a wonderful question. GK, intriguing question. Listen, permanent chairman of Chief of Staff's Committee. Yes, absolutely. Uh, this one is right. Exercise military command over all tri uh, services. Yes. Principal military advisor to defense minister of all tri service matters. Actually, defense secretary is the advisor. Principal uh, military advisor is defense secretary, uh, not uh, uh, this one, uh, the chief of staff. Okay, this one is wrong here. So, B is the answer here. Which of the following statements about ethics committee expected one? So ethics committee uh, during uh, the late speaker, Mr. Balayogi's time. So it was made an ad hoc committee in Lok Sabha. Yes, right. And 2015 onwards, it was made into one uh, uh, serving one uh, standing committee. So here that statement is correct. Only a member of Lok Sabha can make a complaint relating to unethical. No, anybody can make, but can make through a member. That is what it is. So this is wrong. So this committee cannot take up any matter which is subjudiced. Yes, true. Which is already there in uh, court. This committee cannot take up that matter. So this is right. So here if you see, C is the answer. So 16 questions we have seen. In my opinion, except some three questions where little extra thought is required. If we would have prepared well, strategized and prepared, Almost all the question we can attend. So this 16, which I consider as score, uh, uh, this one, constitution and polity. So we can take this. And apart from it, there have been questions relating to uh, people belonging to which party. That was again a straight one that are GK. So I have not included in this. So if you see here, Acharya Narendra Deva Socialist. Uh, the, so that uh, that if we interchange the Congress for Democracy, uh, Jagjeevan Ramji started it. So if we interchange that question, that is over. Okay. Similarly, the question relating to who holds what kind of position, army and all. So those are all pretty GK questions in my opinion. So that is there. So with this, what uh, I consider is we can expect cutoff to certainly rise, in my opinion. It will be certainly more than last year. No doubt about it, provided how CSAT turns out that we have to see. But whatever may be, in all good chances, the first paper cutoff would be not like last year. That is for sure. But I don't think so. It will skyrocket also. Let us wait and watch and uh, hope all have done well. Start preparing for mains. All the best.